My guests tonight, well, they dazzle. Impossibly attractive, talented, young and successful, they are Bollywood's glorious couple. And this is their love story, Hrithik and Suzanne. Just let your thoughts, your thoughts your and dreams, dreams unfold. You and I, let's talk of love, talk of love, our tales dreams. untold. Speak, Speak to me so I can see your soul. Hi, Dugu, darling. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, it's, it's good to be back. It can't look familiar because it's changed a bit. It does actually. The white and it's the flowers and... And me. It's nice, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's fab. No, but that's what I want to ask you. Are you a different Rithik from the one who was here five years ago? Not really. But of course, you know, a man evolves. You know, there are changes. Mm. I've learned a lot. I've learned to accept a lot. A lot mm. of me. Um, and the way I am. So I'm less awkward now. Mm. And, you know more of myself. Do you remember when you came here, this was just after Kahuna Pyar Hai, and you mm. were at the center of this Rithik mania, and you were bewildered by it. I, I remember that. Can I rewind? Sure. Well, I have sat and uh, tried to analyze what's happened yeah. to me, but somewhere down the line, it just doesn't make enough sense, because yeah. uh, too much has happened too soon. I know I, I did uh, correct work in my film, there's nothing extraordinary. It's like I worked for 50 rupees, I got 100 rupees. <laughs> yeah, I said that a lot. I have kept my 50 rupees in my pocket. <laughs> the rest of the 50 I've kept aside because I know they'll want it back. So I've been waiting to ask you, hmm. where's the 50 bucks now? I think I gave it back. <laughs> Nobody took it back. Come on, I mean, you know, I just feel uh, that life is much more balanced now between my fame, my image, and, and uh, the amount of talent I have. So this is a far better way to be uh, than that. At that time, what was being made out of it was far beyond you know, what I deserved. For sure, for sure. You're still harsh on yourself. I, I don't know, am I? <laughs> You're your own prosecutor and your own judge. It's worked for me so far. <laughs> <laughs> Being a star is about loving yourself. Have you learned to do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't know. I have, uh, I have learned to be comfortable with myself. But love myself, that's a bit too much. I don't think I'll ever get down to doing that. <laughs> you don't love yourself? Uh, no. <laughs> I like a lot of qualities that I I'm, I'm about, uh, but no, I don't think I can say I, I love myself. Are you um, still the perfectionist? What is a perfectionist? I just uh, spend a lot of time covering up my flaws and people start pointing a finger and saying, perfectionist, <laughs> not a perfectionist at all. It's just that I have so many flaws that I work so much at it, you know, which is, which is why I became what I became. And my premise has always been that I cannot do a bad job. You know, I can't not look good. It's, it's more trying not to fall. But tell me, is there anybody who is perfect? Anybody and, uh, you know, whoever says that, that nobody's perfect, uh, didn't get a chance to meet Suzanne, my wife. I think she's, uh, she's perfect. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm far from it. Which I, is I better, uh, Dugu? To be perfect or to be human? I think to be human is uh, the closest that you can get to being perfect. If you see a real apple and you see a perfect apple, right. which one would you go for? The real one. The real one? Yeah. Who wants perfection? I think you're right. You're wonderful now the way you are. You're real. And that's what we want. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, today is the job getting easier or harder? Easier for sure. Until Koi Mil Gaya happened, there was this, uh, you know, conditioned uh, mindset mm. of how a hero is supposed to be. And I was just trying to fit into that, that mold. A stereotype. 
Yeah. Everything was always graphed and mapped. Yes. I knew my pauses, I knew what I was going to do, how I was going to look. I had a preconceived notion of everything. When I did Koi Milgi, I was, you know, dude, what, I was, what was I doing? Yeah. That's not acting. You know, that was just, that was pretense. And for the first time, I just, I felt, I felt the true flight of an actor, you know. Tugu, you know, they say there are four seasons in an actor's life. The hmm. first is when he's promising. Hmm. The second, when he's arrived. Been there. The third, when he's finished. Right, and been the, there. <laughs> and the <laughs> fourth, <laughs> and the fourth, when he's back. Right, been there too. <laughs> You've been through all of it right. in the last five years. Right. I remember uh, picking up this magazine which had my face on it and it said, finished. I was smiling from the inside. Why? I, well, I realized it was my face that was putting the bread on their tables for that month. So I could not be finished, you know. Yeah, and then your face wouldn't have been there. Yeah. Secondly, I work best when you say, he can't. I'm thankful because it gave me so much drive, it gave me so much determination. It's always been my, my philosophy that, you know, the finest steel must go through the hottest fire. So that whenever the fire gets hotter, I know, you know, I'll just come out all the more finer. Yeah, but actor. normally actors are, are woundable, you know, and it can't not have hurt. Well, you know, I didn't believe them when they said phenomena. I didn't believe them when they, they said finished. Okay, tell me, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned about films and about this film industry which you did not know when you were starting out? A lot of things. Uh, I realized that you cannot please everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I read this quote by Bill Cosby and he says, there is no sure way to success, but one sure way to failure is trying to please everybody. So that is a lesson learned. And one of the strangest things about success, which I have learned in my life, mm. is that you have this huge mountain and you, you have to get there. And you climb and you climb and you struggle and you climb and you finally get to the peak, hoist that flag. And you look around and suddenly the peak has turned into flag ground again. Yeah, and what lies before you is another mountain with another peak. And then you go at it once more. So after a series of peaks and climbs, you know, you think I'm missing the point here. Because mm. uh, how long do I spend enjoying that peak? Two minutes, Not three minutes. Mm. And it, it dawns on you that it's about the climb. There are going to be a lot of peaks, a lot of mountains. You just have to enjoy the process. If you start doing that? More for the love of it oh. than, than out of uh, fear of failing. So there is a different Dugu in front of me today. Yeah. I think yeah. For much for the better. <laughs> I hope so. Do you remember when you came here five years ago? Yes, You I do. made a promise that you were coming back with Suzanne. Yes. Well, I've been waiting five years and I can't wait a minute more. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Finally. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> Actually, the name is Angel. You'll have been talking about me before no. No. I was here. <laughs> no. How, how did you get this name? Well, there was this one time when uh, my friend Uday uh, was going to this party and Suzanne was going to be there. I, I wasn't going. He asked me, how will I know who she is? And I said, well, you know, she looks like an angel. And uh, <laughs> when, you, when you see her, when you see her, you will know. When he arrived there, he called me back and he said that uh, I didn't even take a second. Yeah. 
you know, he took one glance at the entire discotheque and uh, he just picked her up like that. That's oh, right. Wow. Yeah. And now today, everybody has your name under A for Angel. Even an Angel can be a devil also sometimes. Every human being has their Look at flaws. her trying to justify, explain. <laughs> Excuse me, no. No, you know, actually I'm an Angel, but I mean, I can do bad things. Huh? So didn't you know each other as kids? You know, we kind of knew each other because we used to stay in the same area. I remember we never really spoke or interacted, yes. but we always used to notice. Like I used to always notice that he was this cute guy, and <laughs> whatever. And like you know, this guy used to come and he used to do all these stunts on his bike in this building yeah, that I used to everyone. come. Were you trying to impress her? No, no, really. everyone. All, everyone. All, okay. all, everyone. All the little Just girls. Want to there. <laughs> all the girls. And um, he used to come on his bike and do all these wheelies and. And all the girls used to go like, wow, you know, <laughs> but he was very shy. It wasn't like he was doing it to show off. He was just doing it because I think it gave him a thrill. Yeah. And then he used to take off. It's not that he used to hang out and want praises. Okay. No, I was what, 11 or something, 10 or 11. A lot of my friends noticed me noticing her and they started to tease me by singing that, that famous song, Susanna. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, that whole phase ended with that. I went my way, she went her way. She went to America. And then um, I saw her once at this party. This was at Sunaina's engagement? Probably. And I said, uh, you see that girl there? She's going to be mine. She's going to be mine. I just, I, I just, I just said it. And <laughs> Damn, even that gives me goose flesh till today. I didn't, I had no clue. And then um, we met after she, she returned from her, whatever she was doing in America, the interiors thing. Whatever she was <laughs> I know. doing. How bad That's is that? Very, very important <laughs> thing. And you met at the traffic light or so. Yeah, I mean, Actually, we just saw each other. It was like a typical filmy scene. Very filmy. <laughs> we were both parked, like, you know, parallel to mm. each other. And he was sitting in the front seat. I looked at her. And he was driving. Mm. And I was also sitting in the front. So both were like next to each other, kind of. So I just looked at him and then he looked at me. And we, and just we looked back. <laughs> We pretended like... And the entire way from, from that place to our, our homes, we are, you know, cars were like ahead, you know, behind, ahead. And we were, and we were very conscious. That, um, I was mirror. looking at her, she was looking at me. And we pretended like as if we were not paying attention to each other, yeah. you know. And then we had this mutual friend of ours, Kunu, who's uh, also Kunal, an actor now. Yeah. Hmm. Kunal so Kapoor. And uh, he told me that, uh, hey, you met Suzanne. Uh, she told him? Yeah. So it was yeah. really strange because we both spoke to this common friend by chance about each, by other. chance about each other so he was like you know oh you know she spoke about you as well you know why don't you call her up mm. and then he was shy to call me let me tell you and i told Kunal, I said, why is he feeling so shy <laughs> tell him to call me i'm not going to call him <laughs> <laughs> so anyway then he called i think what uh, did he say he was just very uh, awkward he awkward. Was, yeah, you felt awkward calling me because Please. obviously. What did like you say? Flawed. No, but I, <laughs> I immediately, I immediately made him feel comfortable. I think. Oh, fact. <laughs> I, <didn't. laughs> I get no credit. And I think from day one, we just connected. And you never had a girlfriend before. Well, I had you dates. Not, not a girlfriend. girlfriend. Not serious, but you didn't have a girlfriend. Girlfriend, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Like four days, five days. That's it. Yeah, and then the girl was like, "Oh, I love you," and I was like, "Dude, you know, you gotta. This is not. You know, love doesn't happen this easily. You know, they used to, used to put me off. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know, people just used to fall in love with me. So, mm. You know. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> At that time, Tugu was completely unknown, wasn't he? Yeah, he was like working with Dad. And Koila. And dad used she to think that. that he was a real useless because in those days he talked to me on the phone. <laughs> ah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much you talk on the phone and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Really? People are working so hard and all. Yeah. And you used to always be oh, well, in the beginning. Oh, God, it just occurred to me a strange time. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> when did you go on your first date? 13th of Jan. Leela, <laughs> coffee shop. Dinner. No, you know, it wasn't even dinner. I was, I was, was too shy to eat. So he anything. didn't eat. He didn't eat because he was too shy. He, he was awkward to eat, and I she, ate. She paid the bill. Why did you pay? The because bill? I had started working. I, I, thought, I thought it was quite cool. And I had started working, and so I said, yeah. "Come on, let me pay the bill this time." But he was only earning seven hundred rupees a month anyway. <laughs> not even. He had not started earning. So it was difficult for him. 
and he was very impressed with this. He could not believe that yeah, this girl is paying. That was one of the things that actually attracted me to her a lot. That she was working. Because she was this beautiful, very young girl who was earning her own money. I yeah. thought that was great. So how how could you then after that afford to court her in that sense? I Wait. didn't need to. I didn't need to. She was just. <clears throat> We used to just take these drives. We never really Mental. had these expensive dinners and our As I said, you know, it just took a second. She was... <laughs> you it have, was, you have, it was you, just very you've told me that. You went home and you lay down on the bed and you looked up at the ceiling and said, Ah, I found my dream man. <laughs> <laughs> you stood in that? I Are knew in my mind. Why are you lying? Yeah, no, I knew in my mind that I was totally like, I knew that this is the guy God. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, and let's see. I have that about me. <laughs> oh, stop it. Shut up. No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Didn't he write you lots of poems? He was a poem, a uh, poet in the making. I'm not joking. He was better than any Please of these. Don't go there. Uh, Khalil not a poet Gibran in the making, and all those people. What? Put to shame. How Sam. many poet poems he's written oh, me, God, silly! God, I swear to God. He writes they were beautifully. outstanding, these poems. He writes beautifully. Sam, please don't say such I words. I swear You're to God. You've not read poetry. He yeah. was only 21. I and wasn't. The, and yeah. the, po the poems that he had written were like, as if, you know, he's lived his whole life and, you know, gone through a lot of... Oh, please don't. Because he, he lives his life inside. He he's very deep. Very deep. Yeah. Poetry is very personal. Mm. We know and how much you had to overcome to become an actor. In what way was Suzanne part of that struggle? Let's just say that if she wasn't there in my life, I would not have become an actor. Why? She just had this uh, faith that I lacked. She could see something that I could not. And I was almost contemplating giving it up. There were so many little, little failures that I was going through at that time and I was struggling. Uh, that I just come home and give up. I said, you know, maybe not. Maybe there's something else. And she was like, no, I just know it. I know you have it in you. You know, you just, just go. She almost blindfolded me and pushed me in front of the camera. I think he's a little bit giving me too much credit for something. But honestly, I just knew that what I saw in his eyes, whenever I used to see him, that everybody else in the world had to see that. So I had this thing that used to tell me that, let him know that. But I, I didn't have anything to do with his struggle. It was all his single-handed thing. Maybe, Little maybe. I, I, I firmly believe, I think, that if, if I didn't have that influence, I might have just gone another way. And, and, and she was just the right kind of support that I, a person like me needed at that time. Actually, I was very enamored by his... A dedication. I think that made me fall more in love with him. When she believes something, when she says something with the kind of faith that she has, you just believe it. When I just hear her words and and you know just look into her her eyes, I used to believe that you know she's right. I this is what I should do. I should just you know just keep at it. What did she used to say? Negating mostly my self-doubts and all that. Yeah, he was very... Uh, it's always um, been full of self-doubts. Very negative towards lots of things. Mm. And the I confidence. wanted him to get mm. that confidence. Excuse me, but look yeah. at you. 
Yeah. You know, like I wanted to be that mirror, you know, that. Yeah. You also dressed him, didn't you? Dressed him. <laughs> Fashion wise. You know, I've always had this thing to, like I did it with Zai. Did you tell you know? him also, okay, <laughs> change your shirt or you're not coming out with me? She still does. <laughs> The shirt has been picked by her. I used to always like to tell Zaid, you know, what to wear and what to do. <laughs> so that, so that continues. Is, so now when, when, when I got I know married, what I went <laughs> <laughs> Then suddenly, your shy, unknown boyfriend becomes an overnight phenomenon, a mm -hmm. national craze. What does this do to you? Oh my God, you know, I was in shock. I mean, in shock in the sense that I was totally overwhelmed. I couldn't believe that whatever I felt about him has come true and in such a big scale. The so word is phenomena. Phenomena. <laughs> but what did this do to your to relationship? relationship? We were the same. It has to change, Susan. No, I'll tell you what changed the time that we didn't have enough time to just hang out and you know, you know, so that, yeah, that, that went. but mm -hmm. you know, so he made the effort to see me each day. There wasn't one day that we were in Bombay that and he didn't, he didn't meet me. Hmm. So it's not like he was like in his own world. But what happens to the equation when suddenly a person who is just yours, your own private, becomes like the whole world? <laughs> every woman wants him. He's desirable to everybody. But I loved that. Why? Because it was the biggest high. I felt so proud and he hmm. knows that. I always feel that this is what it is. If you're going to be involved with an actor or a star, you can't get upset when he is being appreciated by other women or whatever. You you know there there are hundreds of women who will, you know, try and get his attention. Hmm. So take it as a compliment because he likes you. You know, he loves you. Loves it never made me feel insecure. No, that's got to do a lot with me. Yeah, right. yeah. He was yeah. he was blatantly Credit honest there. with everything that happened on the sets or whatever. Any girl was making any pass on him yeah. or whatever. We used to we used to talk about it openly. I never felt that oh you're not telling me you're hiding from me. You know, mm -hmm. insecurity comes when people hide from each other. When did you decide that you wanted to marry her? I knew that I could not live without her. You know, mm -hmm. I I needed her and I wanted her to be with her when I wake up in the morning mm. and to have her you in, know, in, my, in my life, in, in my room. And marriage was the only way I could get there. There was a real sweet incident which I must okay. say. He had, we had gone to a coffee shop again and he wrote something of this napkin and he gave it to me. So the letter said, if you're interested to spend the rest of your life with me, then turn over and you know when she turned over there was this if you you know live your life with me I'll give you all of that she was so beautiful <laughs> she said yes and my life left the wings and came out onto the big stage